Hi everybody, this is Scott Detweiler from the Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania. I'm here in my backyard and it is late March and any time now I'm hoping to see some bats emerge and start flying around this backyard. So I thought I would uh, talk to you a little bit about the different kinds of bats that we have here in Pennsylvania. Best way to show you that is to take you to the PowerPoint and let's see what we can learn about our Pennsylvania bat species. First off, let's know that Pennsylvania's bats are all microbats. That means they're all small and they all eat insects. You may have heard of things like flying foxes. Those are megabats. They live in Southeast Asia or Africa and eat fruit or nectar, but all of our Pennsylvania bats are small and they eat insects. We have nine species of bats that live in Pennsylvania. Six of them are hibernating cave bats. They never leave the state. Three of them are migratory forest bats and they will leave the state for the winter. We have two other species that are rare visitors from the south, but we'll save those for another time. First of all, our six cave bat species. Cave bats really only live in caves for the winter. They hibernate there for the winter and they stay within the state. They don't leave Pennsylvania. They'll stay in caves, mines, or old transportation tunnels. In warm weather, they do not live in the caves. They leave the caves and they disperse to roost throughout their habitat. The males usually will roost alone. The females with pups will gather in large numbers and raise their pups together. The males will roost in any convenient spot could be a hollow tree, could be under some bark, could be just up in some branches under some leaves. The females and the pups, they'll want a spot that's very warm, so they'll go to an attic or maybe a bat box. Our first bat is the eastern small-footed bat. This is my favorite bat because it is the smallest of the bat species we have in Pennsylvania. If you stretch out the wings, it's only as wide as a man's hand. He also has a black mask, which is one of his distinctive features. He also has small feet. Not much is known about his life history. In fact, that's the case for a number of these species of bats. We don't know a lot about what they do with their time. The tricolored bat is my favorite bat because each hair shows three colors at the same time. He's a little bit larger than a small-footed bat, but even then, we're not talking about much. If you were to weigh one of these little bats, they wouldn't weigh any more than two or three pennies. Here's a close-up of that fur to show you the three colors that appear in his fur. Our next bat is the big brown bat. This is my favorite bat because he likes to eat cucumber beetles. I happen to like pickles, so anything that protects cucumbers is a good thing in my book. Uh, statistics say that one colony of 150 can prevent 18 million rootworms. Those are cucumber beetle larvae. 18 million rootworms from damaging a cucumber crop. How big is a big brown bat? Well, if you were to stretch one of these out from wingtip to wingtip, he's about as wide as a ruler. Our next bat is the Indiana bat. This is my favorite bat because I spent some time in the state of Indiana and I think it's a nice place to live. This one has already had some notoriety because he has been on the endangered species list for quite a long time, almost since the list was started in the 1960s. Now, we've never had very many of them. We're on the eastern edge of its range. There are larger colonies to our west in the state of Indiana and around that area. Here's a close-up of that thumb. All of our bats have this special thumb. It's in the same position on a bat's hand that your thumb would be in. It has a little hook on it. He can use his thumbs to climb in his habitat. Next up is the long-eared bat. This one's my favorite because it has such long ears. It has very similar feeding habitats to a little brown bat, which we'll talk about in a moment. In fact, many of these bats will share hibernacula space. They will be in the same cave and mix together. Here's a better look at that long ear. You see a little flap there, a little triangle flap at the base. That's called a tragus. We have those two. We have a little tab there. Microbats do use echolocation to find their prey, so they rely quite a bit on hearing, and it's thought that maybe that little tragus structure helps them hear a little bit better in some way. This is the little brown bat. This is my favorite because it used to make the largest winter colonies. By the way, look at this picture, and you can see this bat using its thumbs to move around. 
This used to form Pennsylvania's largest winter colonies. There was a very notable one at Canoe Creek State Park, made up of mostly little brown bats. That hibernacula you once held 35,000 bats. Unfortunately, due to white-nose syndrome, that number has drastically dropped. There's only a few hundred overwintering there now. While these colonies can get quite large, typically a size is more around maybe 9,000 bats. Now let's get to our three forest bats. The forest bats spend more of their time in among the trees. They might fly along creeks and things like that, catching things. They don't come out into the open fields quite as readily, so that's why they're called forest bats. They also don't hibernate in caves. They will go to other places. They will fly other places to spend uh, the cold winter months, but not necessarily as far as you might think. This is the red bat. This is my favorite bat because it uses its tail like a blanket. If you look at the picture there, you'll see how he's kind of tucked in there. Actually, all the forest bats have furred tails. That helps them to stay warm. Our cave bats generally don't have much fur on their tails. These guys will migrate to southern states, but they have the ability to go into a torpor, which is sort of like a light hibernation or a brief hibernation. So they'll get through uh, cold snaps that way. Here you get a better look at that furred uropatagium. The uropatagium is the stretch of skin between their back legs. Again, in all these forest bats, that patagium is furred to help them stay warm. It's also used like a basket to catch the baby when it's born. Speaking of babies, here we have a shot of the red bat with uh, three babies. Red bats are a little unusual in that they have up to three, sometimes even five babies at one time. Most of our bats we're talking about will only have one baby at a time, which is unfortunate because that makes it harder for them to recover if there is a drop in population. For these forest bats, they don't form large colonies for their growing babies in the summer. They will continue to be solo and the mother will raise her pups by herself. Take a look at that tiny eye. Now bats are not blind. They do have pretty good night vision, but even so they have very small eyes for their size. In fact, they could probably see about as well as a mouse can as far as acuity goes, although their night vision is, uh, is, is fine. They do rely more on their echolocation to find their food and to maneuver around, but they have eyesight as well. Here's a silver-haired bat. This is my favorite bat because he has a hair color like mine. He's got black fur and he's frosted white on the top. It's a light frost just on the tips of the hairs. We'll see the next bat has more frosting on him than this. This is another one that just migrates to southern states and he can be active even in, in the winter locally if it's not too cold. They don't hibernate deeply the way that the cave bats do. Here's the hoary bat. The hoary bat is my favorite bat because it's the largest. The hoary bat is heavily tinged with white. Think of a heavy frost as opposed to a light frost. In fact, the word hoary refers to very frosty. A hoar frost is a very heavy frost, and the hoary bat has a heavier frosting on him than the silver-haired bat does. Another cool thing about the hoary bat is he is our only long-distance migrant bat. He flies all the way to South America to spend the winter. How big is a hoary bat? Well, a hoary bat is about two hand spans wide. Here's another comparison. You can see the small-footed bat is about one hand span wide. We get the big brown bat kind of in the middle, and the hoary bat is twice as wide as a small-footed bat. These images give you a better idea of how big they are in the hand. That little Indiana bat, hardly bigger than a mouse. The hoary bat, a good bit larger. A nice chubby hamster, perhaps. Well, there you have it. Here's our nine Pennsylvania bat species, six species of K-bats, three species of migratory bats make up our local Pennsylvania bat population. Shout out to all the cool pictures that I was able to find for these. They're all using Creative Commons license or public domain. Thanks for joining me on a quick rundown of our nine species of bats here in Pennsylvania. I hope you'll take a moment to, to step into your own backyard or a natural area near you to see if you can see any of your own bats flying around. Thanks for joining us. This is Scott with the Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania. Please check us out at our YouTube channel and at our website, aswp.org.